Welcome to the second video on the financial year report. This video will explain the financial statements that you will put in your year report. So to do that, um, we'll start with a simple example. You're one woman or man with a dream and you owe 10,000 euros. You have recently obtained your driver's license and some of your friends work at a taxi company and are happy to give you the excess work. Uh, if there's no excess work, you can sit at any location of your choice, like a railway station, an airport or a casino and wait for clients there. So you want to start your taxi company, so what do you do next? Well, you buy a car and you buy a five-year-old Mercedes E280, uh, which costs about 40,000 euros. So you had 10,000 euros, so how do you finance the remaining 30,000 euros? Well, in this case, you're lucky the dealer offers you a three-year payback time in the yearly installments. And on top of that, you would like to have 5% interest for this deal. Good. Off you go. You travel for a year, back and forward with your taxi, the taxi company, and you make a lot of money, to your uh, experience at least. So, how have you done the first year? Well, you started January 1st and you earn various amounts of money, but on average you earn about 3,500 euros a month. You have however spent about 2,500 euros a month on petrol, drinks, food and a cigarette, air refreshments and all those kind of things you need for your car. So what is your EBITDA? And EBITDA stands in this case for earnings before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization. Well, this is 3,500 minus 2,500 times 12, because this was per month and the EBITDA is of course taken on a yearly basis. This means that you have 12,000 euros that you earned last year. Well, sounds good, right? But who wants to know? Well, the banks want to know, the shareholders, the prospective buyers, and especially your creditors, and in this case the car company that gave you this loan for three years. But most importantly, the revenue company wants to know, the revenue service wants to know, the tax company. They want to be able to charge you tax. So on what basis will they charge you their tax? Well, in this case, we assume the tax is 40% and linear, but how much will it be of the 12,000 euros you earned last year? Well, the EBITDA was 12,000. However, tax is levied on earnings before tax. So the I, the D and the A, the interest, the depreciation and the amortization will still need to be taken out. So let's start with the, in, uh, the amortization is zero. The amortization in this case, as discussed already in an earlier video, is the write-off of intangible assets and you don't have a copyright on the taxi company. Uh, but how, if you would have needed a taxi license, this license could be written off using amortization. The depreciation is of the car. We assume the car will be depreciated to zero in five years' times, which makes the depreciation 8,000, because five times 8,000 is 40,000. The interest, you borrow 30,000 euros, 5% of the 30,000 euros is 1,500 euros. If you take out all these numbers, you will end with an earnings before tax of 2,500, 40% of which is tax. So the final profit is 1,500. Sounds good. Uh, the, but before we continue, do realize that the profit and loss statement is based on accounting principles. And there are many different accounting principles. And this leads to different profits for the same company depending on the principles. Cash flow, on the other hand, is purely money in and money out. So what was your cash flow over the last year? Well, we can still start with the EBITDA. So far everything is the same. We can take out the interest, which was 1500 and we can take out the tax, which is also money you were paying out of pocket. However, the depreciation is not money you spent. You already bought the car for 40,000 euros, you spent your 10,000 and you borrowed 30,000. So what is the money then that you spent further? Well, you had to repay one third of the loan you took of 30,000. That means you have to repay 10,000 of the loan at the end of this year. And now we see a problem, because you cannot repay this loan. You're 500 uh, euros short. So you had a positive profit but your cash flow is not sufficient to su sustain your company. So bankruptcy is around the corner and you might have to close for good. Luckily, there's an uncle 
that will give you an unsecured loan for an interest of 200% for one year. He will loan you the 500 euros and you can continue your taxi company. Please note that profits plus depreciation minus the loan payback gives the same result in this case. And for simple calculations this is always true. However, uh, in the business game when you're looking at your final results this will not be the case because there are differences in timings between the payments of cash and the uh, as elements in the profits. But for simple calculations, especially at the beginning, you can use this formula to estimate, to quickly estimate the cash flow uh, from the profit statement. So the second year you get the hang of it, you earn 19, your EBITDA is already 19,000 and your interest has gone down to 1,000 because you repaid 20,000. Uh, yeah, as you repay 10,000, so you, you still have 20,000 on which the interest is charged. But of course you always have to pay back your uncle. And this interest rate was 200% of 500, which means you have to also pay another thousand interest. Good. So including the depreciation, uh, you will have left a profit of 9,000. 40% of the 9,000 is 3,600. So your profit after tax is 5,400. And the tax, uh, the cash flow, comp the cash part of their company. Well, the interest is there, the tax is there, so these are all there. Of course, the loan repayments need to be added. In this case, also the loan repayment of your uncle, and you will end up with a cash flow of 2,900, which of course is less than the cash flow than the profit you made. So, okay, you had a profit of profit and a negative cash in the first row. It's going better next, but what else is there to tell? Well, you can use the same two uh, flows, the the profit and loss statement and the cash flow to also uh, show a balance. And the balance is always a moment in time. These two are flows, so these cover a full year. A balance is a moment at a certain part of the year. So we can make a balance of the start of the company and we can make a balance of the first year of the company and then we can make a balance again at the end of the second year of the company. Each balance has two sides. We have the asset side and so what you have in your company and we have your liability sites, which explains how you financed what you have. On the asset side, it's subdivided in fixed assets, such as the car in the taxi company, and current assets, such as money uh, and other elements that are uh, stock and stuff like that, so that are quickly turned into cash. On the other side, you have basically two elements, equity and debt. And equity is the own money you invested in the company or sometimes somebody else's money, but it's money that is belonging to the company. Debt is money belonging to somebody else that is only temporarily invested in the company uh, against a security such as a mortgage or, uh, or not. And this debt is always taking interest uh, in some sort. So the first of January of the first year, you had a car of 40,000, you had no cash which makes the left side very easy. The fixed assets are 40,000, there's no current assets, and the total is 40,000. On the other hand, you put in 10,000 euros of your own money, and you took a bank loan for 30,000 at the start of this year. So on the right side, there's also 40,000 together, but there's equity and debt. Well, after the first year, it looks a bit different, and we need the cash flow and the profit and loss statement to get these numbers. So the car, we have depreciated the car by 8,000, so that means the car is only worth uh, 32,000 uh, right now. We have no money, so the liquid assets which represent the cash is zero. Again, so we have a total of 32,000 on the left side. On the other side, the liabilities, the equity was 10,000 and it will remain 10,000. However, we have also another part of the equity which we call the retained earnings, which is your profits. So in this case, your profits were 1,500. So you add them to your equity. Then we have a bank loan, and the bank loan at the start was 30,000, but at the end of the year we, pay, we paid 10,000 in the cash flow, and that is now gone to 20,000. Of course, to do that, we had to take a loan with our uncle, and the uncle was 500. The uncle's loan was 500, so that is also shown on this side of the balance sheet. And then the total will again be 32,000. The balance sheet, the left and the right, should always be the same number. Thank you for your attention, and 
uh, will continue with a more detailed explanation of how to judge the balance sheet in the next video.